Yo, what's up, everybody? We got another episode of The Strange Road for you. I'm your host, Mikey. Of course, as always, riding shotgun, the bro host, Bub. Let's go. Bub, how you doing tonight? I'm rocking. I'm ready. You good? Feeling Couple good? Couple sours deep, some poutine. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's that go. That poutine, uh, you guys are going to have to Google that because I'm, I'm not going to describe what, what that poutine. Mushroom gravy. Mushroom gravy curds, over french fries. That's all I can say. Some kind of fries. I can't remember that they're cut from a special potato, but God, is that mushroom gravy good. Absolutely. CBC, everybody. Well, we had to get the boys in Master Control fed. Uh, Stoner and Disborough are with us, making everything look and sound dope. As always, the four fellas, horsemen. Thank you so much. Uh, we got a great episode tonight. But before that, just let you guys know, as always, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, the Facebook group, Strange Road Hitchhikers is rocking. Uh, Instagram, at The Strange Road. Twitter and uh, TikTok. The TikTok page is rocking. On fire. On fire. Uh, and we go. We always got the clips and the reels. Yeah. Uh, we've got some new rounds that are going to be coming out. So keep an eye out for all those uh, fun little bite-sized videos and content that the studio uh, of misfit like to toys we're trying to keep all the you know inner working still rolling and, and keeping the clips hot and fresh and yep and hopefully keeping people interested and excited hey, hey we're we like it so i'm pretty uh, thrilled with it but uh if you guys are in youtube share this video if you like it uh, make sure you subscribe and as always follow us in spotify and Apple Podcasts, leave Check a review. Out. Five stars or bust, please. Always review. I will mention, I started throwing some uh, polls and some questions in Spotify on the episodes because yeah. I found that feature. I can't help it. I just, once I find something, I'm going to toy around. The Spotify uh, folks, and our Spotify audience is growing. So yeah. all you guys out there, thank you again for listening wherever you are. We appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it for me. I'm ready to hop into this. Sounds good. Yeah. Game on. Okay, cool. Because let's get cryptid with it. <laughs> let's get strange with right. it. Uh, tonight, we have a fantastic guest. Michael Strayer is with us tonight, everybody. Michael is a podcaster, uh, the co the host of the Mock Boys podcast. All right. And we'll let him tell us a little bit about all that. And also a children's book author. And uh, he's currently lives in Morgantown, West Virginia. All right. And Representing West Virginia. Absolutely. Love it. And uh, we've gotten in contact with Michael through through Instagram, started chatting. and uh, Social media does it again. I love it. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Michael's... Uh, come in contact with a lot of the fellas and people we've been kind of mixing it up with in this genre of podcast. So six degrees of Sasquatch. Yep. A hundred percent. So without further ado, let's invite Michael into the show. Let's go. Michael, what's happening? How you doing, man? What's up, buddy? <laughs> Hi guys. How's it going? Hey, Thanks for having me on. Doing well. Yeah. yeah appreciate Absolutely. you coming on. Appreciate course, it. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, man, yeah. let's hop into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got down to uh, creating this podcast, The Moth Boys, and with your buddies. Tell us about them and uh, and a little bit about your show. Yeah. Um, well, we got we started this uh, this podcast. Uh, we went to the moth the moth uh, man Mothman festival one year. Yes, and we essentially we we essentially said, you know, how can we how can we get a table at this event next year? Yeah. Uh, Cause we wanted to do something to be a part of it. And uh, so it started off uh, oddly enough as like a t-shirt company kind of where we, where we, which it didn't, it didn't take off at all. This is, it was, this was just the idea <laughs> first. So it started off as this t-shirt company where uh, we would rip off uh, album covers, but put cryptids in them instead of like, you know, the normal artwork. Yeah. Um, but, but that never took off. So uh we, it was a little bit too much for us. So what we thought, you know, what, what could we actually do? And that's a podcast. You yeah. Know what I mean, so <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of what we, uh, we just started the, started, started doing it, started recording. Uh, um, and so it's, it's me and then it's moth boy, Jake, and it's moth boy, Matt, uh, moth boy, Matt is my brother. Um, and then moth boy, Jake is our like lifelong friend. He's, he's always been there. I can't remember a time that he hasn't been, you know, with us. So, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, we have a good time and, uh, we're a little silly. We like to, uh, um, not make fun of things I mean, so much, but we like to laugh about it. You know what I mean? Sure. We kind of like, you know, cause a lot of this, a lot of this stuff is real strange. Like, yeah. uh, so, uh, people like to do serious podcasts and that's fine. I, I, I love to listen to them, but we decided to try to go a different way with it and be a little, uh, be a little silly. And, uh, and people also like the fact that we all have known each other 
for for like ever. Uh, yep. They can tell, you know. What I mean, that feel, that feels really good too to, to yeah. know that um, it sounds like you're people. People have told us it sounds like we're listening in on somebody's conversation right. that they're not they're not supposed to be hearing. Like, yep. you know what I mean? So, um, so it's, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So yeah, it all started okay. at Mothman Festival, and we actually and uh, we did get we did get a table the next year. Nice the Mothman Festival. Yeah. So the thing we went out to accomplish, we did get. So like that was that was like a very small goal, and we we made it happen. So we were very happy with that. So. Well, you got to start Moth somewhere. The old Mothman strikes again. Yeah, well, inspiring in, yep. people right. all across the world. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly, what a strange yeah. story, strange events of, I mean, that festival, from what I understand, is fantastic. I haven't been yet. Mm -hmm. um, I've I, been mm -hmm. to the museum. In, well, I've yeah, driven down it's there. Insane. Yeah. It's insane. Like, we, um, events for us are hit and miss because, uh, I don't know, it's a podcast, so it's hard to, like, yeah. if people don't know, if people don't know about you, they're not going to go buy a t-shirt from you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you have to, like... It's more of like promoting and then hoping the next time you're there, people will be like, oh, yeah, you guys, yeah. I'll buy a T-shirt this time yeah. or whatever. Yep. Um, and usually we sell a lot of stuff at, at Mothman Festival, and that doesn't really happen to us a lot at festivals and stuff. And, I, you know, I have friends, I have artist friends that go to Mothman Festival, and, and they make their uh, – they make their yearly living off just the Mothman Festival. You know, what wow. I mean? really, it's it's, it's 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 insane. Yeah, it's insane. It's okay, we're going craziness. to Mothman yeah. Fest. Well, need, I want yeah, to see need, that. You you need to get on their waiting list. That's like a yeah. mile long. You, you know, can, what I mean, it's hard so. to get a booth there. Oh, I it just want to go. Yeah. Well, we'll go for yeah. fun. I just want to go. It's still coming yeah. up, right? It hasn't happened yet. It's come. It's uh, September. Yeah, it's in middle September. of September. Mitchell, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we, I would suggest even if you guys, even if you guys go, just promote right like, for sure business, for sure throw your business cards around you know oh, yeah, i'm just yeah, gonna yeah. wear gear if we have it by then and just well, start selling stuff off my back be like you want yes, it 20 bucks yes. that was us at yeah. cryptid con last year we went just for fun we actually sponsored mm -hmm. it yeah didn't and, have a booth. you know got our logo on the on the t-shirt and whatnot <laughs> but really That's just awesome. went for fun and handed out like 250 stickers oh yeah like 25 mm -hmm. hats shirts we, awesome. just spammed, like, hey, yeah, we yeah. spammed the hell out of that place <laughs> it was actually That's funny because i was sitting there and I, I was like next to a table full of stickers and i heard a guy and girl walk by and they're like oh there's those strange road stickers i've been seeing that stuff everywhere <laughs> and it's because mike's just like <laughs> popping them everywhere man god it was funny we were we were That's prolific let me tell you, that's that's a good start to like any anything. It's just getting out there and ha passing out stickers and passing out business cards. That's what we've really done. We still do that to this day, and it's, yeah. it's really helped us out a lot. Just getting out there, meeting people, being friendly with people. Yeah, uh, you know, telling people to listen to it if they don't like it, that's fine too. Whatever, yeah. <laughs> whatever. You I know what I mean? So, totally understand yeah. what you're saying. I'm a, a gabber yeah. by nature, and when I'm out and yeah. about, and if I have stickers on me, or if I just start talking to someone. I know that somehow I'm naturally leading them to telling them about the podcast, but it feels organic. Mm -hmm. Maybe oh. I'm just a really good salesman. But by the end of it, they're like, <laughs> what's the name of that show? Like, I have guys writing it down, <laughs> taking pictures of it while I'm waiting in line to check out the store. I'm like, what the That's hell awesome. has just happened? Oh, and then I'm like, oh, shop. I'm doing well at kind of like, oh, yeah. Every pizza shop around my house, every worker inside that pizza shop has Knows. a stranger at <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Because those are the that's people the that are always they're, they're into alternative well, stuff. Yeah. For the most part, like people that are in the service and you know, they're kind of weirdos a lot of the times. Yeah. Stoners, dude, you know, people that even being a nurse, I needed something to kill time. Fiction. I needed podcasts. I needed yeah. something in between mm -hmm. procedures or downtime to give me and I wanted to listen to Monsters what, Among Us or what Cryptids or you to know to them is oh do you like yeah. do you like Bigfoot? Do you yeah. like UFOs? Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, here you go. We've got you. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're <laughs> trying to cover our, our our whole thing for a while was uh it wasn't even like that kind of stuff it was do you guys like to laugh that's yeah. my brother would just he would shout that at people do you guys like to laugh and if they said yes you know he'd hand him a card and be like listen yep. to that then you know so yep. yeah 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 well, yeah, if you if you're watching our show and you get upset, which actually has happened kind of recently, where they, people just don't like joking around and you want to sit down and have a really, really serious conversation, our show's not for you. You hey, know, no, it depends. Now, at it times depends. we go super, super serious, but, but we're, I'm gonna still say, gonna, we're still going to pepper in some humor and try to have fun. My with it. mental tennis racket is ADD. So if, if it yeah. catches something, it can snap back at you as like, I just can't help it, but I'm going to say this. I can't help it. Right. I have to well, do let, it. let me tell you, I feel I feel like if you don't pepper that stuff in, it's gonna get stale real quick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, people are gonna notice too. And it's, I agree. it's not I'm not yeah. trying to be Ben was, Stein. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Or Bill Nye He's, or Ben yeah. I'm gonna get my wallet yeah. out of my pocket too, because that's driving um, me crazy. Well, where did you Michael, where did you say you grew up? The upstate New York? Is that kind of I, northern yeah. New York? 
I grew up in Western New York. It's, okay. uh, it's, it's the very like, uh, Western corner of New York. It's, 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 it's part of Appalachia. And it's mm-hmm. just like, it's one of the only places in New York. That's part of the, that region. Well, that's, and that's it's a very ti- it's a tiny section. How beautiful. Though. That's oh, where yes. those peak and peak and, uh, yeah, you know and, exactly where it is. That's yeah, totally it. That's, we that's, we that's wild wild ski up there. That, was, that, yeah. that part of New York is so yeah. unique. Oh, it's stellar. It's beautiful. That's my area, man. Yeah. And the times yeah. we, we've driven to Maine for gigs yep. and different uh, opportunities. And then um, I took my family out to Maine, but that's the way we take up yep. uh, mm-hmm. to go to the East Coast instead of taking 80 and getting gridlocked in traffic. So that's just go. upstate New York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whenever somebody it's says west, upstate. Western. Western, Western yeah, yeah. New York. What's Western. upstate New York? That's the thing. Just upstate. Lake, upsta- oh, Lake Oneida. Yeah, upstate's, and, yeah, upstate's more like Rochester, I think. Yeah, really? New York and uh, Ithaca, maybe. Yeah, I always Syracuse. thought upstate was just outside of New York City and upstate meant like you meant in the state, like you're up on, yeah. well, uh, clearly I'm wrong, but that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, Western Western New York, Rochester might be in Western New York. Uh, Buffalo is the big city. Yeah, okay. Western yep. New York. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Buffalo, Never yeah. been. So check that out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great area, man. It's, Niagara it's, Falls. it's nice. I, I love it. Yeah. Niagara so, Falls. Yep. That's how did it. you matriculate to West Virginia? Uh, love. Uh, oh, hello. My, my, my wife. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I lived in, one. I lived in, that <laughs> was good. I lived in Pittsburgh for like five or six years. Great before city. This. Beautiful city. Yeah. Fun yeah, yeah. town. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, that's why I lived there for a while and I was doing my thing up there and then we got to talking and that's not, Morgantown's not too far from Pittsburgh. It's okay. about an hour and 20, hour and 20 minutes, maybe. Nice. Uh, so we, we got to talking and uh, it turns out that I just, yeah, it's, I love West Virginia. I've, I've always loved West Virginia. I've always had some kind of weird uh, affinity towards West Virginia. Really? We always, we, me and my family would always drive through it to get to the to beaches and stuff. Mm-hmm. I've always loved it here. I've always done research on it. The history of, uh, love the history of West Virginia. I love, uh, yeah, I just I love it. I love and I love how it looks. It's beautiful. It's like uh, untouched a lot That's of the great. areas by yeah. man, which I which I love. That's great. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, love brought me here, and uh, I moved down here during the pandemic. And I uh, haven't left. <laughs> Damn, so, man. Congrats. Yeah, That's they, awesome. Good for you. Everybody we talk to has shifted gears during the pandemic. I swear, every mm-hmm, guest we have mm-hmm. on is like, I was doing this, and then I just decided to, you know, go take shake a new up. adventure and shake it up. Mm-hmm. I think most yeah. people that are succeeding in something did pivot at that time hmm. and or kind of had their tried their hand at something different or moved somewhere well, new. It gave everybody a, good, a minute good, to stop and think. Yeah. That's yes, what it it's did. A good time to good time to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, people were thinking too much. Maybe you know what I mean. Well, you're so, at you're at uh, home. Yeah. You broke at least. And again, not for me. I was at work, but it still was enough of a, a shake up even at my work at the hospital that it was like noticeable mm-hmm. that something was going on. But for everybody at home, they were like, "Man, this really changed things," and it really opened their eyes. And then they were like, "Hey, well, you can work from home." And everybody's like, "Well, great, I can work from home." And then going yeah. back to where it's like. There was so much Pandora's box that was opened up there that you're not putting back in, and it's still being a problem now. And you know, office yeah. building rental, uh, empty leases, and stuff like there's there's a lot happening from that still. So it's wild to think what that did to everybody. Because even my brother, mm-hmm. he had been an engineer for like 20 years. He quit his job and like changed and <laughs> went to something completely different. And I was like, you're the middle child. You're the most stable. Like you would <laughs> never do anything like this. And yeah. I thought I was going to shock him by telling him I was planning on quitting my job. And he was like a month ahead of me. I was like, what? So COVID yeah, I left, blew I, up worlds. I did. I did the same thing, man. I, I left like this job I really loved and everything. And, just, yeah. you know, I start, started new. You know what I mean? So, can you? Can yeah. I ask what you did? I worked with – I worked at the school for the blind in, oh, wow. in Pittsburgh. So I was wow. like a teacher's aide up there. You know, I, I, you know uh, I remember actually the one day they told us to pack up and go home and – that was the last time I was there. You know what I mean? It was wow. wild. It was the last time I was there. Holy so cow. yeah, I used to work. I used to work with like young kids, like uh, like four to six. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was a great job. I loved it, and uh, and I miss it. But you know, I like it down here, and I'm I'm happy. Well, I'm good. Here, so. Good. I'm happy for you. Yeah. You That's know, cool. Things That's, work yeah. out right. Like it's always scary. Mm-hmm. A buddy of ours, when he lost his job, you know, he had been contemplating going to a recording program for music. And I was like, look, this is the opportunity the universe is presenting to you to take mm-hmm. right now to go do that. You know, you've got enough cushion. You're going to get a severance, like figure it out, go do that. And then you get the next job. You'll be fine. And it worked out and everything, you know, 
But those yeah. opportunities come along, and that's where it's like it's really a test of like, are you going to go with the comfortable misery you're in? Or are you going to mm-hmm. try? Are you really going to take a chance Absolutely. on yourself? You know, and I'm, Mikey's yeah. been through that. Kyle yep. and Mikey have been through that. I've been through that. You've been through that. Like it, mm-hmm. it really gets you to this. Like you were saying earlier in the other episode, like it brings you to another level of your consciousness, where you're like, I can do this. I can do that. I can, you know. You really can kind yep. of take care of things maybe you didn't think you could do before, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So with the podcast and you guys have everything kind of rock and rolling, how long is the Moth Boy? How long have you guys together? Um, did you guys start from day one, all three of you guys together? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. We've all been, uh, it's been like uh, probably close to five years, four and a half, five years. Awesome. It's always been us, it's always been us three, and I, I don't think it would go on without all three of us. Right. I don't think it would uh I think if one quit, we all they'd all everybody would quit. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's been about four and a half or five years. So it's a, uh, and uh, and we don't. Uh, it's a um, it's a hobby. We don't make money from it, and yeah. uh, we don't let it get in the way of real life. Uh, you know, so we just right. record when we can, and we put out an episode when we can. Yeah. And uh, you know, sometimes we'll make a post and say well, there's no new episode. Yeah. Because uh, we try to get we try to get two episodes out a month. And if that doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. We apologize. And, uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. So we, we, we definitely, yeah, it's, it's been a long, long journey with this whole thing, but it's a lot of fun. And we just, we do it, we do it whenever we can because we love it. And, uh, hey man, yeah, even totally if you're doing shows. an episode a month, it totally mm-hmm. shows that you guys love it too. You, you take a month off. It. Yeah. Thank you. You know, Your passion yeah. comes through. you might stop for a yeah. month or take a break, but yeah. you know, keep doing yeah. it because it is. Yeah, it's, Absolutely. It's a good therapeutic thing too, even of just like getting your own interests out there, right? Like, mm-hmm. still talk about cryptids and record this for ourselves, but I don't care if anybody watches it. Yeah, I like right. that you people watch it if you enjoy it, but exactly, yeah. I and want the, the conversation. Thing, we, have, we have like a bunch of people that kind of rely on it. They'll they'll, uh, they'll they'll tune in the Monday that we're supposed to have a new episode, and they'll be like, "So what's what's going on? What, yeah. You know, where's the new episode?" And we'll be like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, sorry, it's just it's just not happening." They're, they usually yeah. come back and say, it "Understand," and yeah, so it's it's. It's cool. You know, it's just, uh, it's definitely just something that we love and we do it when we can. And we make sure that we make sure that it's like, um, that we're all in the right Mm -hmm. headspace to do it too. Uh, Like we're not too tired and we're not grumpy or Ah, um, we've, we've done, we've, we've we've done episodes where we're grumpy and tired and they, they suck and they don't, they don't sound good and people notice. And yeah, uh, Yeah. so, but yeah, yeah, it's hard to to turn on when you're not uh, upstairs you're not feeling 100 percent. yeah and you know it's always when we've tried to pile on like five episodes in a week we do we record oh, three we've done of ourselves stuff and then jump kudos on to you guys man da's up da's podcast that week in particular was well wow for, first off the the real impetus when we were just trucking like maniacs those first couple of months is because we were trying to get youtube established and get kind of that built up so that it was you know, we knew we could get the video time there, but just getting it watched after a while too. And then the subscribers. So like we were looking at those things and now that that's not really as much, we're still doing yeah. a decent amount. Like we're, we're not focusing on that as much, but it was like, okay, well that's done now. Like what's the next goal and what's the next goal with it? Yeah. Like trying to, you always want to have a measuring stick of how you're doing. Like me playing guitar. Yeah. I want to go from playing open chords to bar chords to playing my, you know, whatever I need a, progressive improvement level that i can monitor you know monitor. Yeah, and like yeah. you michael we, we're trying to do yeah. other some other things too uh-huh. with, with yourself mm-hmm. i know you're writing children's book you got a new mm-hmm. book out um mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you, the subject of your new book we've never even heard of so that's something mm-hmm. i want to first of all Definitely i want to hear interested. a little bit about your children's books and how you got into mm-hmm. that because yeah man mm-hmm. I, I really need some fresh books in my house i got a nine-year-old okay. and i got a five-year-old so and they love nice. cryptids they all have mothman uh-huh. t-shirts and bigfoot t-shirts oh cool so. yeah i uh <laughs> i have a, i have a new uh he's not new i keep calling him new but he's he's a year about a year and a half at this point uh but Congrats. yeah he's absolutely he's awesome yeah it's the best man so uh so children's books i'll talk about those first um i have worked with children my whole life essentially I've, I've worked with children in some some way so my life has been full of children's books you know I've, I've, I've loved them i still love a lot of children's books to this day there's they can be just as good as any you know written book you know what i mean uh yeah especially if you get a good one like the where, where the wild things are yeah that's it's an amazing amazing piece of literature Absolutely. you know what i mean like it's it's great so um the big red so i got book, into it that's one of my yeah. favorites 
the yeah, big red okay. book, the collection yeah. of the different Dr. Seuss student pseudonyms, but all of those stories are basically Dr. Seuss books. But I think, yeah, uh, yep. Sam the he, Firefly he, and uh, Take Me to the Zoo and Take Me to the Zoo. That's those a good one. St- stories are amazing. Amazing, yeah. So like that's what kind of you know I've I've worked with kids and there's always kids books with kids. So that's what kind of pushed me. I always I always thought like it'd be really cool to do a children's book. Um, but it took the pandemic also, funny enough, uh, to really push me to start doing that. So I reached out to uh, a, and you know I love cryptid, so I was like, why not take a cryptid I love and put it into something else I love uh, and make this happen. Mm-hmm. So I reached out to a Danner from Conjure Dust Designs who is an artist in Columbus. Um, mm. Wonderful, wonderful artist. Oh, cool. Uh, so I, I can't draw. I can't work draw with Jack. So I, I just I had, <laughs> Yeah, I had the idea. I had the book written and I sent it to him and he illustrated it and it turned out great. But um, so first one is Mothman Learns the ABCs. He illustrated, Danner illustrated that. And that's uh, Mothman and his friends going around West Virginia learning the ABCs. Oh, that's um, cool. With his cryptid buddies, uh, his West Virginia cryptid buddies, yeah. So that's that was a lot of fun. That's that was, that's a big. Hit. It's it's been a pretty big hit that one. So, so what that, you're that saying is good. the Mothman was illiterate and he came to West Virginia to learn. Exactly. And that's why yes. he visited. Ah, yes, that's amazing. Um, exactly. Exactly. He's he learned instead of like the you know the negative uh, stuff yes. that people say about West Virginia. No, people I love are it. learning in West Virginia. Yeah, that's why yeah. he's there, dude. Yeah, exactly. It's a moth so to knowledge. Him. I'll tell you what. The exactly. People, the people that talk shit about West Virginia have clearly never mm-hmm. been there. West Virginia is It is dope. one of the most beautiful places mm-hmm. on earth. We, it, it has its problems like everywhere else. Yeah. It's, it's, no, right. it's no worse than Ohio. You right. Know I mean, I mean, it's like, Appalachia, you know, I, yeah. Ohio has yeah. got problems. Uh-huh. It's not that oh, much yeah. different. In, oh, yeah. <laughs> and down in, you know. We've got some spots. Yep. In yeah. Appalachia. It's everywhere. Like you said, it's it's not, you know, relegated to one mm-hmm. corner of the state or the country. It's yeah. kind of right. peppered all over. Right. Yep. Yeah. So that book is, that came out first. And then I wrote a book about, uh, with a new artist named Bally Raven, uh, Bally Raven Folklore. Um, and she's another great artist, very different from the other style. Uh, so we put a book out together called Curious Creatures of Vegetable Man. And the Vegetable Man is a cryptid from down here in West Virginia. Wild, wild story, wild, wild, horrifying story, an encounter with this alien creature that I somehow turned to like this book, this children's book. <laughs> and if you, if you go, if you, get, if you go to Amazon, you'll see some reviews that go, this really isn't a children's book. I don't can, know what you guys, can you tell us that <laughs> story? I've never yeah, I'll heard tell that you story. I'll, yeah, I'll tell you. Okay. So this is a man named Jennings, this man named Jennings Fred Frederick in Fairmont, West Virginia. It's a little, a little tiny town. It's like Fairmont Reevesville, West Virginia. It's about a half hour from Morgantown. Okay. Um, so he was out uh, bow hunting uh, woodchucks um, one morning, and uh, you know he hears this this uh, he hears this noise from the bush, and it it turns it 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 it's like what did he say? It was like a record player at like a high speed. It sounded like a, ch- a chittering or like mm-hmm. a, a loud pit a loud. It sounded like something. On, not from this earth. Something like so, whirring almost. Like yeah, whoosh. no, it was it was, no, it was definitely like it was like talking, but it was high pitch. It was like jabbering. I get yeah, jabbering. Oh, a weird jabbering sound. And this this creature jumps out at him. Oh god! And it's a, a giant. It's called the vegetable man. It's a giant green. Uh, stalk, its arms and legs are made of like stalks almost. What? And like and it's got a. Uh, suction cups on each finger what and uh yeah yeah suction cups on each finger and there's like needles coming out of each finger <laughs> yeah what so, what happens is this Who? creature tele- vegetable this creature- man <laughs> yes vegetable man what? this creature telepath this creature telepathically reaches out to him and says i need your help um you know i am i know of all you people i know of humans i'm not gonna hurt you i come in peace and then right after that the, the creature lunges at him and and uh, and takes its such suction cup needle hands and puts him in his arm and starts sucking blood from his arm. No, nope. yeah, no, nope. yeah. yeah. I draw the line. Yeah. If that's your handshake, we're we're not friends. Don't bro right. me if you don't know me. That's not broing me. <laughs> so Jeez. the creature, so, so he gets to looking in the creature's eyes while all this is happening. His, you know, he's feeling the pain in his arm, and this creature's eyes start uh, turning into different sh- shapes and swirls and oh, colors. Okay. Shut and they, up! They, it it hypnotizes him. He does. He's, it's like a it's like a pain reliever for the guy, so he doesn't feel what's going on. You know what I mean? Um, and then essentially, what happens? He creature jumps off, and he 
that was it. That was the encounter. And then later on, a few seconds later after the encounter, the man hears the whirring noise of a UFO, or like a loud noise that he thought was a UFO flying. So, yeah. And that was just one-off encounter. Nobody one-off else encounter. In, yep. the, in the area yep. had any experiences. Nope. No more experiences. Whoa. But that's, but I, yeah. the detail, that's like some hypnotoad shit. I, I want to say this. Yeah. That's a really wild story, but I'm just saying for someone to make up just some normal dude to make up the suction cup and the needles and the mm-hmm. sucking of the blood and the hypnotizing the eyes, hypnotoad. you got to be a yeah. pretty yeah. great science fiction writer or somebody that's, right. that's dreaming up this stuff. But th- those details, yeah. it's weird. Disturbing. Yeah. I just just turned that into a children's I book. just want to say this, though. <laughs> that part where you're saying it's got the oh. suction cups and it goes on his arms and it had the anesthetic. Like, you know, leeches, when they bite you, they have an anesthetic right. and an anticoagulant. So you, they right. bite you, you don't feel it, and they make right. you bleed so that they get the blood quicker. Right. It's you know? kind of like yeah. a leech. They, be, they, they use them for therapeutics in hospitals, but they also do, you know, study on the enzymes that they secrete. And Right. So the so the book, I, we somehow worked out into a children's book, and it, it, it is horrifying. It's a, And that's what it's supposed to be. I wanted a scary story. I loved reading scary stories as a kid. So, oh, my God. Um, I no, would the, the whole not thing go to is, bed. Right. The story in the book is it's um, the vegetable man is making his way around planet Earth, um, just making its rounds, checking on planet Earth. And it it, uh, it realizes it didn't eat that morning. It didn't have its food. So it's it's flying above West Virginia and it ends up landing in West Virginia and seeing that man. And, you know, he was getting sick. The creature, the alien was getting sick. So he hadn't eaten. And, he, you know, he was start, he was going to die, essentially, if he didn't get this food which was the man's blood um so wow. that's what happens is is kind of like he, he sees this man he's he's feeling sick he's like i'm sorry i'm doing this and then sucks his sucks his blood and then goes away and that's he he lives to see another day to to check up on planet earth the next day or whatever so that's that's essentially what we turned into a book uh and uh i love it i'm very proud of that book Dude, that's it's, awesome. it's a lot it's a lot of it's a lot different than writing just an abc's book for yeah. young children so yeah. it's it was, it's great yeah yeah it's kind so, of it's got a wild more of story, a, a, like a story yeah. arc, you know. Yes, character. that's exactly it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a little darker. It's it, you know, it's you know, yeah. And then um, small some small town monsters publishing put that out. Okay. Uh, that was their first. That was their first book they published actually. Oh, cool. And that was pretty cool. It was pretty cool they released that for us. But like I said, if you read some, there's a couple of Amazon reviews that say like. Yeah, this isn't a kid's book. Bro. I don't know why you guys, you guys. But what are you going to do? I mean, you know, maybe your kids need to grow up a little bit. Well, <laughs> I was about to say, we had friends growing up that they watched movies at the age of 12 or 13. Exactly. Well, you yeah. as well. But Eight, seven, six. Some other friends yeah. that I thought we were watching movies after playing Mario Brothers that didn't go well with Mario Brothers and pizza. I was like, this is not appropriate, but I guess we'll watch it. Yes, we'll watch And they had a weird oh, movie yes. like that once. I remember this Dude, one we horror it film. when we were so young. I, but this yeah. one horror film I'll on never TV? get out of my head was this dude went to kiss this chick and his tongue like turned into like this tentacle thing, dude. And I was just like, I. That's uh, Charlie <laughs> Sheen. Uh, what's that movie? That was not okay with me. Uh, or like The Fly with Jeff Goldblum back in the day when I was too young to see that. Mm. That was oh, grotesque. Real quick, I, w- I did watch uh, a documentary about the making of the made for TV It. I oh, watched that too. They yeah, I did too. They interviewed Tim that was Curry. Good. Yeah, and Tim, and they're like, you know, you just totally. Re- he had people for his whole life just come up like, you like blew my childhood disappeared after watching <laughs> it. And he's like, you should not have been watching that. Right. He would tell these people like, why were your parents letting you watch <laughs> it? Right. It wasn't That's a kid's your, movie. Your like yeah. their yeah. fault. Like because he did such a good job that he literally changed the gen a generation of kids that were mm-hmm. forever afraid of the dark. Dark and clowns. Oh, they, yeah. were, they ruined clowns, dude, at birthday parties. I remember Freddy. <laughs> I remember Jason. I remember Michael, albeit those were earlier on. Probably Freddy was still too early for us, you know. No, Freddy was there. He was there, but I mean, I was born in 82. Like the original. Freddy, right. Yeah. Nightmare but Elm Street. it came out and I saw that in real time. 91. And that was on mm. TV in those big chunky hour blocks. And then yeah. the stand was on too. Yeah. Both of those were mm. mind boggling, but it was just like, <laughs> whoo, baby. I mean, it wrecked my dreams and sleep pattern for grades, like years. Still. Yeah. And like, 
And like being inspired by like uh, goosebumps and scary stories. Yes. Oh dark my god! Are you afraid yeah. of the dark? Yeah. Are you afraid of the dark yeah. on Nickelodeon? Well, yeah. Scary yeah. stories yeah. to tell in the dark was an oh, amazing yeah. series. Yes, Haunted Ohio. They used to have that series, right? Yep. Didn't they? Yep. And then the Goosebumps series. Oh my gosh, man! I, I Best every man. time there yeah. was a new one in the library, the I get that. The yeah, dummy, the mask. straight up. The dummy was the <laughs> scariest Goosebumps book in my. I still opinion. watch those movies, but because the dummy is With not, it's not ghosts. It's like the werewolf one was kind of. The later ones weren't as good, but the dummy is just all like psychological thriller. Yeah. Like it's yeah. totally psychological because it's a dummy. I mean, in all yeah. actuality, it's not that scary. Well, that's what. But, that's what it turns out to be too is a psychological right. thriller. Yeah. When you really read the book. Yeah, the the monster and the horrific the part mon- is they blew the monster. You know the whole deadlights and the actual like mental struggle they get, and that's what happens when those people basically become catatonic. Is it has won in this kind of mental sumo wrestling when it gets it into this zone, right? And that's what they actually end up doing in the book portion. One of them is strong enough to go toe to toe with them because they've met the turtle and all this weird it's stuff, strange. and they they bite the tongue of it in this and like they're fighting him in this mental battle and that's how they destroy that entity it's like nothing but like it's been it. coming here for like 30,000 years or something like <laughs> it's a really wild story even with like dreamcatcher too that's a very deep mm-hmm. like I love that one. psychological story the movies again yeah. I, I love Horrible. stephen king books the the movies Dream misery Catcher was good was. yeah misery i thought was pretty good probably didn't go full to the story Misery, Shining Misery was pretty good, ones. even though Kubrick kind of gave him a couple Kubrick, FUs and what Kubrick he did. Gave, that whole movie was just his inter a lot of it. Yeah. Stephen Stephen King did not like. No, he wasn't happy no, with that. He was not a fan. fan of that. Not a fan. But yeah. I still love that movie. The yeah, Shining is one of the best. Man. So strange. Yeah, like the stuff he did to Shelley Duvall during that filming. <laughs> no, I mean. Like, like in real, almost like to yeah. a point of like abusive. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. she was so stressed out. Her hair was falling out. She would rip out. Cl- like that's not acting a lot of that. She is just like beat. Horrified. And then he's like, roll. Now you're like to yeah. the point, like you got the, like you're right. There. I buttered that bread just enough. Now go. <laughs> and I mean, that's yep. like, re- <laughs> you see the movie and you're like, wow, that changed my life. And the actor's like me too. Like yeah, legitimately did, yeah. yeah. Like on yeah, a lot absolutely. of levels, um, but yeah. I digress too much. Those are those are all obviously you know you're writing now. You're 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 an author, right? And you mm-hmm. know I'm sure yeah. Stephen King, all those books that you read, has kind of influenced you in some way. But oh, your yeah. your latest book, tell us about that because mm-hmm. this is something. Okay. Yeah, again, I hear about this. Never heard of this. Yep. Yeah. I'll say, okay, so um, me and my podcast put a book out together, and we like to call it a mini, we call it a mini book. It's like 40 pages or something. Okay. Um, so what this is, it's called The White Monsters of Sherman, New York. And Sherman, Sherman, New York is is an, an, an Appalachian town about, it's in Chautauqua County where we were all born and raised. Chautauqua? Uh, all the, all, all the, yeah, Chautauqua County. I love yeah. that word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saw it at so, a script uh, spelling bee one year. I'm not going to lie. It was like the final word to spell. It's a great word. Sh- sh- Chautauqua? Yes. But they <laughs> were like awesome. sixth graders. <laughs> so yeah, we were all born we were all born and raised there. Um and uh we had read a John Keel book, um, The Complete Guide to Mysterious Beings. Yes. And in, in in that book, uh a young man writes a letter to John Keel and describes that he this is this is back in the 60s. He describes to John Keel that he's seeing giant uh monsters giant white monsters in his yard they come down from the swamp uh and he describes them as giant ground sloths mm. white uh creatures big white uh ground sloths wow and are my mylodons uh he called them um so you know we've always loved that story because that was like that's right nothing happens like that in our backyard because that was mm-hmm. you know i grew up i grew up 10 minutes from there it's like you wow. know what i mean i've been there a million times and i've never and we probably heard that story i was probably I don't know how old I was. I was a little bit younger when I, I first read about it. Uh, so it was pretty cool. And like, like it really stuck in my head. Cause it's a, like a local thing. Yeah. And uh, so kind of like an urban so, legend of something that you didn't know was real, but you, everybody that you grew up with learned or ended well, up hearing the legend right, of well, these white. Exactly. Beasts. Right. I, I, you know, getting it out there 
to people in Sherman, they they don't really know about it either. I mean, mm. unless you read John, unless you read John Keel, you wouldn't really yeah. know about it, right? Mm. Um, and it, there wasn't word on the street or anything. And uh, the 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 letter that the the kid wrote was anonymous, um, mm. so it's it was it was a uh, hard to hard to nail down. Um, but eventually, we were on we were on some kind of like uh, message board, and there's this guy named John G. John G was writing, was responding to comments going, I think this was me as a kid. This was this, because it was like a cryptid Shut wiki. Shut your mouth. Whoa. Yeah. That's awesome. I get, I guess there was a little segment uh, on cryptid wiki about these creatures. Uh, so and uh, cool. there's, there's, a, there's this guy named John G. And, uh, you know, it's like, I think this, I think this is me. I'm not sure. I'm a, I'm a retired school teacher in, in, in Ohio now. And uh, so he lives in Ohio. Um, and uh, so, we took the name. We took the where the he's from Chillicothe, Ohio. Okay. Um. Yeah. So he told he said I'm a retired school teacher in Chillicothe now. Um. So we we did some like sleuthing, some really like weird like creepy stuff, and just like looked up anybody in Sherman uh, or Chillicothe named John John G, and then we came up with a John Goodwill online, and that's the guy's name, John Goodwill. And we couldn't find him online, uh, but me, <laughs> I was, you know, doing my thing, and uh, I found his son. It turns out, hmm. and uh, and I told him like, I, I don't know if this is you, or I don't know if this is your dad, or you know, what I email, I messaged him on Facebook, and I was like, if this is your dad, like just just let us know. We want to we want to talk to him. I just you know I just I think it's a cool story, and uh, so he's like, yeah, that's my dad. He he uh, he still talks about them like all the time. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, so, yes. Bravo. He yeah, wasn't yeah, like, yeah. nope, so, I just had a fever dream. <laughs> no, no, no. Thankfully. Exactly. So right. So he yeah, so he uh so he uh the son got a hold of his dad. Um and he's he's you know, he asked the dad if we could have his email and he said, Yeah. Um so we, we emailed we emailed him, you know, we were a little nervous because we're moth boys, we we like to spoof on people and goof right, goof around. Right. And I, we, we, we were straight up just like, we're not going to goof on you. This is like, yeah. we, this is something we love. And this is something, right. this is very, this is very dear to our hearts. This is like our, this is like, uh, this is our, you know, our hometown essentially. Yeah. Um, and he came back and he, you know, he was a little hesitant first and, uh, understandably. Um, and then we eventually, we actually agreed to meet up, um, in Sherman together. So, uh, what we did was we, we, we rented the, uh, community building in Sherman um and we had we we, we uh, recorded a podcast there with him. It was really cool because it was like it was John, the guy that saw the creatures, and then his family was like surrounding us. Essentially, his whole family came with, and they were just nice. hanging out around, just listening and stuff. And uh, they were they were just fascinated by the whole po- like podcast thing. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, yeah. at the end of it, there everybody was. You can if you listen to the episode on on Mock Boys, everybody starts clapping at the end. Everybody's like real happy that like this whole interview went down. Dude, and um, it was just. Yeah, so his whole whole family, um, we all hung out after, and uh, he showed us all the encounter spots where he saw the creatures. What? Like, we, yeah, yeah, him and his family came. We all walked down up and down trails. And he's like, yeah, that's where I saw that one, and that's where I saw that one. And um, so it was just spent a day together hanging out with him, and it was it was wonderful. It was just it was great, and uh, uh, because his whole family saw them, it just it wasn't okay. him. His 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 him and his brother started seeing them together. What? And uh yeah, him and his brother and then his he's got so he's got two brothers and a sister and then a mom and a dad. They'd and see they them all often. Event, they would see them often. And then the, the thing fa- is is the, ground sloths yeah. were a real animal. We know that. For I sure. know, but yeah. and that's but wild though. But, Maybe they are a, a species still naturally living in the swamps of West Virginia. W- not in West yeah. Virginia. Or I'm sorry, New, New, New York, York, right? My yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah New, New York. York. Okay. But uh, I'm just yeah, saying so, like that's it's wild yeah it's, yeah it's hurting yeah. my head it's really <laughs> so like so we so there's one encounter uh that he told us about where like um they were driving down the road him and his family and like they put they because there's like eight encounters in our book he remembers like eight encounters like pretty well jesus so we wrote that we, we all we all wrote those they're all in the book and everything and then there's art if there's like art with it that comes with it but there's one really cool one that's my favorite one and uh, his family was driving down the road, and they see they see him in, in field. They saw him in a field. So the dad wh- whips over, and they just watch. They watch two of them 
a mom and a dad, and then two babies. And the babies are like pl- playing with each other, you know, and like the, 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 the two other creatures are just watching them play. And they just sat and watched them for like a while, just watch these creatures just sitting there. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, it's, it's wild. Unbelievable. Now, yeah. but they weren't Bigfoot like, they weren't. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. it's ground sloth. Yeah, that's no. So well, well, the thing wild. was, he said they had they had a long tail, oh. and they could they could walk they could walk on two feet or four. He saw them on both two and four. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, so we had the day in Sherman together. We all that was wonderful and it was great, and uh, it was it, it just really it, it was really important to us. And we're like, how can we how can we do more for this? How can we get how can we get this guy's story out there? How can we, uh, you know, yeah. and we, and we, we decided to do the book and, you know, we, uh, um, this book is to get this man's story out and nothing, nothing else. This is any money we've made from this book has gone back into the book, ordering cool. more copies to, to send to people. Um, you know, we're doing this, we're doing a festival, uh, next month in Sherman. Um, it's called Sherman days, tiny little tiny town festival. You know what I mean? But they're really excited to have us and we're going to be selling the book there. And like, yeah, we're hoping that, that more so people cool. can, yeah, we're hoping more people can come out to, uh, come, come to the festival and just tell us that they maybe they've, they've seen them too or something. You know what I mean? Like, right. That'd be really great. Well, but yeah, I, this, I was going to ask, do, have they ever found like historically like remains of no. dug up, you know? Well, well, the thing is there's, there's a thing called the Chautauqua Gorge, which isn't too far away. And uh, people have have rumored that there's a cave system there. Oh gosh! And uh, yeah, so uh, and that's something that we want to explore eventually. But we haven't. I've because I've been going to the gorge, but I didn't know of a cave system at all. So, but there's been rumors of a cave system there. So that's where John thinks they might be. You know, hanging out. Would you, you know? go spelunking? So, Would you get in there in full no, headlamp? No, or? no, no. I I watched somebody do it, but no. <laughs> so I'll tell no, you what, no, man. No, I've sir. watched some of that intense um, yeah. stuff where they're like really Depends. getting into tight crevices, I, and I'm like, there is no way in hell. I am yeah. wedging myself in there and getting stuck. Like we it. did in Cumberland, unsupervised. God, it gives me anxiety. Oh man, about. my our Yikes. buddy cut his leg open. Had to oh go yeah, to the ER oh, on yeah. a big sharp rock and Woo. just like it looked like somebody just filleted the back of his well, calf. Those rocks are sharp, up. baby. And the doctor Yikes. said you can't go wakeboarding or get in the water for the rest of your trip. <laughs> so oh, he got, got back from the hospital and he took duct tape, duct tape his leg up and went right out on the water. That's disgusting. Wrapped wow. his leg in da- duct tape. What a That's what a diamond he is. <laughs> Good guy. See, so, so yeah, like I said, like we've been, I've been. The whole point of this book is just to get this guy's story out. Yeah, and uh, cool. you know, he's been very, he's been very thankful and very kind throughout the whole thing. He's very excited that his story is getting out there, and we have just, a, we have a little bit of a cult following, a little, a little, a little diehard fans, and, and we have our little group, and they all love the book, and you know, we've been really just trying to get this book out there for him. Yeah. Um. And uh. So. Yeah, that's the story of that man. I mean, we we are think. I don't know if we're going to do another one. That might just be a one. I mean, there wasn't any more. There's nothing else to write. You know what I mean? So right. we could do a history of mylodons or something. But yeah, we were th- we were thinking about putting that in the book, but then we're like, it, it just takes away from what we're trying to the do. Story, we're, right? We're, yeah, we're just trying to get that guy's story up. That's all. That's mm-hmm. that's that's it. So I think you made the right a, call there. Yeah, it's just it's, it's simple. It's simple. It's like uh, somebody wrote. It's like a case file from an old school paranormal investigator's desk drawer. Sure, it's sure. It's kind of what it is, essentially. You know what I mean? So, where that's 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 kind of cool. I kind of like that's kind of what we were going for. Yeah, it's just a simple. Oh, that's like the declassified thing, you know I mean? style it episodes. Of, you know, case number this, and they go into like exactly. whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah it I reminds me of these kind of books that we there you go come across that are yeah. you know we have, we have one in the in the drawer the, uh, the story of the newer Coley stones. Yeah, and it's literally a yeah. forty page booklet. This yeah. is on the Serpent Mount of. This is like made in 1907, but that's, that's kind of awesome. what it reminds me of. Is is oh, it's yeah. Here. The tale of the two stones about the newer Coley stones. Oh, that's cool. This is oh, little, that's cool. I love these little things. Like that's all you need. I mean, yeah. I, mean I feel like if if you try to like if you try to put more in there, it just weighs it down and just it, it gets it gets away. People try to fill stuff up, and like that's not what we were trying to do. We were all just killer, to story no up. filler. Yeah, right. exactly, man. It's just yeah, we did. So the book consists of um, the letter that he wrote to John Keel in the beginning, and then we did an interview. So the interview is in the book, and then we have the encounter. Encounters, all eight encounters, uh, accompanied with artwork, nice. and then we have we have we have the uh, 
then we have the uh ex like the uh the photos from the day we were in Sherman together. We all took photos, like cool. you know, hanging out and like searching the areas and stuff. So it's like real, real simple and to the point. And just, you know, we've we've had a lot of good got good feedback from it. And it feels good just to help get this guy's story out. We've done t-shirts and you know, we did this really cool poster for the event we're doing next uh next month. And it's just it's just something to celebrate for us. You know, nothing like that happens and we want to yeah. and nothing happens, nothing happens like that in Sherman. I mean it's 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 tiny. It's it's like a, you know, I don't know how many people live there. It's like, I don't not a lot, not a lot of people. And they, yeah. I, anybody we've reached out to, the library has been really kind to us, and they they always they love the book. And um, so yeah, it's just the mayor of the town. We've uh, she, we're she was the one I got a hold of to get a hold to do the community center to to do the interview. She's been really kind, and she loves the story. And yeah, so it's I'm hoping that. It's not, I don't think it'll ever get to be like a Mothman type situation. Yeah, but a lot a lot of people like doing that. You know that trip like the legend tripping you know what i mean mm, like, sure like, sure it's like a thing so i mean even if you put it on the map just as you know these that's where these weird creatures we've seen sherman new york it it, it gets on people's maps a little bit and that's right it's kind of neat to me no so, yeah. no different than hitting the scenic overlook if you know where they're at yeah right exactly if you want to I mean, find yeah, the cryptid yeah. overlook or you want the strange hangout cryptid. like i want to know where exactly. that stuff's at well you probably exactly. met jeff from uh map and black the guy that runs the Frogman uh, yep. Festival, yeah, but he literally yeah. makes maps of right. strange mm -hmm. places. Uh, we have the yep. we met him at Cryptid Con, and um, he, he actually ends up is knows a lot of the same people we do. So we, right. we mm -hmm. connected with him. We came down and helped out for the Frogman Fest in the yep. AV room. Had a great time, um, but literally, yeah, putting this story on a map. You know, put it on a map. I want to know he, where they're at. And he's and he's going to. He said the next edition, he's going to put it on there. So, oh, awesome! We're, 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 Even yeah, better. We're grateful for Jeff. Congrats, Jeff, the dude. man. Jeff is the yeah. man. And also for giving that story such levity and 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 like a spotlight on it, right? Like you keep saying, like yeah, the story's been around a long time. It reminds me of these guys doing the uh, Serpent Mountain in Impact Crater tour with Thomas Johnson because it's like the guy did it yeah. for twenty five years and nobody ever got it down on record right right like, so yeah, if he passes exactly away it. it's gone forever and now we need to find bits that, and pieces of it from whoever knew the story like i which, want it from the source right. which reminds yeah. me kind of brings up michael we were talking to you a little bit about our background as a production company mm. but i mm -hmm. mean if there was ever a kind of video project behind this mm -hmm. you ever need help with something like that let us cool. know uh, my interest is totally peaked on this that would be fun uh, yeah you know this could be it, it could be an interesting project uh you know the, the yeah. kind of you know build the book and this and the vegetable man the vegetable man. It's wild. <laughs> i appreciate i, I appreciate love the vegetable that. man heck yeah and heck like, yeah well that was exactly the thing is uh you know he kept saying thank you you know he he he'll, we text each other every once in a while and he'll say thank you so much for you know i didn't ever think my story was gonna get out there you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that's that's enough for, that's enough for me yeah and that right feels there. great and I, I i can't tell you how many how many copies of this book i gave away just to get this guy's story out yeah that's you good. know i ordered a I, I ordered a bunch just to send to people and give to people and you know uh so it just it's just i'm really just really happy to, to do this for this guy this to john for john goodwill and it feels great and uh just to open open a case on a on a, a weird cryptid that now a lot of people know about you know what i mean for or sure a for sure creature so i think you hit yeah, the nail good. on the head with this one man i mean yeah. this is exciting. yeah i appreciate it it's on yeah. exciting so many different yeah. areas of good feeling about it and again yeah. a story i've never heard like yeah dude all West virginia has so many cryptids ohio we're rich in legends oh, cryptids oh. earth has mounds a few. we've got is quite a few is the grass man ohio grass, grass man, man? Ohio? yep the man. Yeah. Yeah. the minerva monster no. the grass man the loveland frogman right. of course uh the boggy yeah. creek or er, not boggy creek that's the movie um yeah whatever that's over arkansas i think yeah but yeah. Uh, i came I up with a great I've sasquatch been to, I've been slogan to, Leave yeah, your leave your imprint without impact. Mm -hmm. you Never go. seen him. <laughs> I've been to impressive. Loveland. I've been to what was the other one? Minerva. I've yeah. been to Minerva. Yeah, yeah. I was I was at the I was at the the Frogman Festival. We were there, and uh, that was a lot of fun, dude. It was a good did, time. We met, right? Did I? We met, probably met. I yeah. think I'm. You might not have been there, but Maybe I think I met Matt. the other guys. Matt. Yes, yeah, Matt. I yeah. think I met Matt yeah. and introduced myself when I was just yeah, walking yeah, around. Um, yeah, absolutely. I did. We just. We, yeah, <laughs> but some one of you guys has a sticker for sure. A yeah, Android yeah. sticker. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I think he does. Yeah, <laughs> we put yeah. out a lot. That's awesome. Well, it comes full circle, man. It does. That's yeah. so cool. You guys wrote that book and went down that journey and helped get that guy's story out. Like I just, that's a mm -hmm. feel good story for me yeah. of just you know how positively 
it impacted this guy and his family. And I'm so happy you guys got to spend time with them. And thank you. Yeah. That's yeah. just incredible. Um, and yeah. then one other thing I know you guys have a festival or an event that you uh, are running or are helping out with, mm-hmm. or can you talk mm-hmm. to us about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have uh cryptid bash, uh, which, uh, this is its third year. Um, first two years we're here in Morgantown and, uh, we kind of outgrew the space that we we had uh, and down here in Morgantown. So we had to move it. And we, we really were having a hard time finding a space in Morgantown. So we, we moved down south. Um, we moved we moved to um, we moved it to a little brewery called um, Greenbrier Valley Brewing Company. Okay. And they're known they're known they're known for like their cryptid beers. They have a Mothman beer. They have Perfect. Fra- they, <laughs> yeah, they have Mothman beer. They have um, a Flatwoods Monster beer. Um, but yeah, but they, they sadly uh, shut down, oh. um, like a couple months ago or uh, maybe five, four or five months ago. So we had to scramble and find a new venue. So we were hitting up venues, uh, to, and that sucks. That's not fun to go through. <laughs> uh, that's a big change. Uh, but so we, we, we hit up some breweries and there's, there's a brewery called Free Folk. Uh, and, uh, and that's over by Fayetteville, West Virginia. It's mm-hmm. like uh, New River Gorge, New River Gorge and uh beautiful area down there. Yep. But they said, yeah, we'll take you, we'll take you in and you can have the event here. And, uh, so it's in uh, it's a little town called Heiko, West Virginia. It's right outside of Fayetteville. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, this, it's, it's like, uh, cryptid artist vendors are going to be there. It's going to be live music all day. There's going to be food trucks. Uh, we're going to do a raff. We're going to do some raffles, I think. Um, and then it's an after party. After uh, after the event, there's an after party from 8 to 10. The, the initial event runs from 12 to 7. After party is uh, 8 to 10. It's got a couple, you know, there's a surf rock band from Maryland, and they're cryptid themed. They're called nice. Beach Creeper. Those, those guys are cool. Um, so they're playing the after party. And uh, it's just a free all-ages you know, all day event that people can, you know, if, if you don't have a lot of money, just come hang out, listen to some music. Yeah. Uh, you know, of course we want you to, to support the artists, obviously, but um, yeah, we, we want to make it. We, we, we don't charge a lot for the tables, uh, the vendor fees. We keep everything cheap. Uh, we try, we want these artists to pocket as much money as they can. Um, and then everything we make from any kind of fees or anything from the vendors and stuff, we just put it right back in the festivals, paying mm-hmm. the musicians, you know, paying whatever, you know. So it's all it's it's all uh, we don't really have to use money out of our own pocket or anything. It just it it works itself out, and that it's right. it's great. So good synergy it's just, to it. it mm-hmm. Sounds very organic exactly. and self sustaining, yeah. and I love Stoner, it. Mm-hmm. I love Stoner it. Just pulled it up for us. Heck yeah! Oh, nice. There it is. Yeah, Check that out. We'll have all the links in the description. For what is that? An electric sombrero? Like, what's I keep going looking on that at picture. It. That, I know, but over it's the top, it oh, looks like he's wearing an electric sombrero. I love it. I mean, it, it's his energy. If hand. that's what, if that's what you see, I, I like that. This I'm feels like that. a cryptic <laughs> Rorschach test, and I love it. That's awesome. That's a cool piece of art. Uh, yeah, man. But yeah, so, so we outgrew the, the the venue in Morgantown, and the first year we were like, I'll be happy if a couple hundred people come or whatever. You know, we were excited. We did uh, A lot of people came out though, and a lot of people. And I think this year is going to be going to be just as big. We're having local towns involved in it and stuff. And uh, so, yeah, I think it's it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be an all, all it's going to be a cryptid bash, man. I mean, do you how, cryptid I mean, bash three, baby. Do you feel like cryptid? Hell yeah. We've talked about it. And I'm sorry. Did you say when it was? I'm sorry if I missed oh, that. Sa- uh, Saturday, August 19th, yep. 12 to 7. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was going to say with the whole like cryptid, I won't call it a revival. I'll call it like the bloom or spring it's a bloom. of yeah, it, right? I think it's a spring. But I was thinking the, mm-hmm. the, the same kind of like, you know, we've had like Comic-Con or like people love horror movies or like, again, the Jason and Freddy movies of that. But like we've had more like the Monster Quest and Unsolved Mysteries yeah. and X-Files. And I think we've had more of it kind of along our lifetimes to where now, like when you say it, like you're like the podcast, what the heck? Like, man, it feels like anywhere where you throw a cryptid fest, I'm going to strike oil because there's so many people Mm -hmm. that are interested in it. Right. And like Mm -hmm. even just going Mm -hmm. and having a interesting conversation with another person that's going to the event, like that's worth it to me. And then I get to hear the speakers and like, it's like a full on experience. Like Mm -hmm. to me, that's, I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's totally it. And there is, there is some kind of like strange, uh like you said blooming of love for cryptids and i think it's great i mean anybody can be into this stuff you know what i mean it's not just uh these stories on ours for us you know what i mean that's right. it's kind of going back to the white monsters 
it's not just his story or our story. We we want it. We want every, we want everybody's eyes on this. You know what right. I mean? It's so it's it's kind of like the whole point of Cryptid Bash. We want it. We want it to be an event for everybody, just like cryptids are. Just uh, you know, these stories are for everybody. It's, and uh, yeah, we try to make it that way so people. I love it. Everybody can come and have fun. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna have to cool. make it there sometime. Sounds we awesome. We have to just schedule this out for the entire year when you have just cryptid things. There's not <laughs> enough. There's not enough music at. Uh, cryptid festivals and that's a big pe- well that's a thing so i need to start well, writing the, cryptid songs well uh what's b b mills at uh the uh hocking hills bigfoot conference uh, or hills, festival yeah. mm-hmm. they have music and speakers yeah. and so th- that's cool you guys have music acts. i love it oh yeah well the thing is I, when i was living in pittsburgh i was a i was a music promoter okay so uh i would book i would book these shows a lot of like like mr smalls and like, stuff like yeah well not did I booked Mr. Smalls before. Mr. Yes, Smalls I have. is a great the, venue. The the smaller room, not the bigger room. Yeah, but um, yeah, we do a lot of like death metal and like punk music and stuff like That's that. Very so cool. It was like it's like yeah, yeah. It's more like heavy, heavy, heavier music. But I did that for years. I did that probably for five, six years. You know, uh, so live music was is is an important part of that event. Heck uh, yeah. And so we love like during the day, it's like it's chill music, acoustic or, you know, banjos or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was important that we have a cool rock bands at, you know, at the, at the after party. And we also made it made it. it um, we noticed that a lot of events, um, the vendors that set up, they don't get time to enjoy mm-hmm. the uh, day. They don't they don't they don't get to enjoy the day. 100 percent. So we made so this year we made it so like there's an hour in between the event and the after party. So these these vendors can break down grab a beer and just go yep. and watch these yep. bands play you know what i mean Very so smart. i mean that's great it was a it was it was a big it was a big deal for us to like we want to do something for the vendors too where they can enjoy their day too you know well I mean? so you got to take care yeah. of them almost just as much as the audience mm-hmm. coming because yeah. you know to go to exactly. an event with bad vendors too you know you go there yeah. and you're like i wanted to buy some well, merch i wanted to see some cool stuff and you know i've been yeah. to ones before it's like everybody's selling the same kind of thing like there's just stickers everywhere it's just well that's you know, it i mean yeah, well, that's it. We we hand choose uh, the the vendors for the most part. We so know you get we get nice some. Spread. We, we yeah, we get the inquiries coming in, and a lot of people. And uh, you know, that's cool. It's cool and all, but we we want to make sure that we know the product that's coming through. Yeah. It's gonna be. It's not gonna be the same tea towel, Bigfoot tea towel, over and over again. You exactly. Know I mean? Yeah. And we want it to be original artists, and so it's important to us that we get to hand choose people, and then uh, yeah, so that's it's a big deal that yeah. we that we do that because a lot of these events, you know, that, that it's, it's understandable, uh, but they have a lot of this, the, like you go to the, each table and it's the same thing over and over again. Right. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't see the point. Not in that, interested you know, in that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Not interested. Tell me yeah. this. Have you ever seen a cryptid yourself? Oh man. Uh, no, I haven't, I've never had any kind of experiences. I, uh, I wish I could tell you that I have, but no, uh, sure. Not my, sure. Yeah. My brother, Matt has had some, my mom is like haunted. My mom's like legit. She's a haunted woman. Uh, she's seen a whole, <laughs> she's, she's legit yeah, haunted yeah, for boy, real. She is. She's yeah. Like she's a, uh, so, uh, when she was young, she, she saw a tiny person, like a, uh, like an elf essentially, uh, run across the street. Yeah. The rabbit people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When I was so, in so Panama, like, the guy down there told us that there's the rabbit people of the jungle, like the Panamanians cool. believe that there's yeah. still these little tribes that lit because they like see them still. Yeah. And I thought he yeah. was joking oh, with right me. And I was like, dead. what? And he was like, oh, no, no. I've seen the rabbit people. And I've also seen like the UFOs coming in and out of the mountains down here and stuff. And I was like, right. what? I'm like, I, yeah. I have to ask my wife still to get his number. Like, yeah. He was such a cool guy. Yeah. We had him come eat lunch at our uh, like Airbnb where we were staying. I remember drinking a bottle of wine and making like grilled cheeses for the three of us and like talking yeah. like cryptids and stuff because we had just fired up this podcast. So it's like, man, we need to get you on there and I need to get his name again. But the small, tiny oh, people who man. saw that, your mom? Yeah, my mom. Yeah, my mom had some encounters. She saw a little person run across the car. I don't know what to call it, an elf. Or How tall? Like a, How tall? Like this? Uh, t- tiny. Yeah, like that. Like, yeah. Like just, David like, the Gnome. It was like a gnome. It was like a gnome. That's good. Yeah. And then she also she also saw a UFO right above her head at one point. And then uh, she like I like I said she's a haunted woman. Like she went from one house, <laughs> our house that we grew up in. Um, she was always she was always having stuff happen to her, like constantly. But you never so experienced my, anything at the house. I've never she experienced was. anything. No, she was. That's so and weird. she'd always go. Did you, did you guys hear that? Did you guys feel that? What? And we're like, no, we didn't do anything. So my mom and dad get divorced, and she moves in with a uh, with her new guy, and 
stuff starts happening there at the at her at her I know, see why her new you guy's sh- house. You say she's yeah. a haunted woman. She's haunted the conduit. Because because we asked we asked him and he was like, nothing has ever happened in this house before <laughs> she came here. So she was she's, she's a, wow. so she'll just like ra- she'll randomly call me or message me and she'll be like, I just heard a bunch of like knocking at the door and went to check, Ooh. nobody's there. Wait, just let me ask there you real one, quick. Your mother's name yeah, is yeah. not Zool, is it? Jeez. No, no. <laughs> Actually, that'd be sick. I would love that. <laughs> but uh, there was one Are time, actually, it was just kind of <laughs> the key master. So this was kind of scary, actually. She's like, she called me one day and she was like, um, so Mike, I, I heard somebody whisper hello from the basement. And I go, okay, well, you need to fuck, get like get out of there. Freaking <laughs> run out of the house. It could be a le- legit maniac in the house. Right. And uh, yeah, so she ran outside and like she waited until... Uh, um, she waited. I forgot who it was. Maybe my brother came. Somebody over showed or up, or yeah. yeah, somebody showed up. Yeah, and there was nobody in the basement. Man, it's it's, it's the weird. She's yeah, she's haunted. It's awesome. Uh, so she's <laughs> seen things. She's had auditory. She's seen a she UFO. She has not seen things. Well, the yeah, the, the not, little man. Well, well but not yeah, ghosts. She's, well, not ghosts. No, she's yeah. never seen anything like uh, you know, little, floating or nothing. Yeah, she's heard noises and knocks. And uh, what was the UFO nothing, encounter like? Oh, so she was sitting out uh, on on her porch with her friends and her sister, her sisters. I think both her sisters, yeah. And then they look, they they see across the street, or no, see across the street, they see this UFO, and it's just sitting there, <laughs> spinning disc, yeah, just, like lights and everything. And uh, you know, they start screaming and they run for it, and they just see it shoot up in the air and, yeah. and go away. And this is yeah, in New York, so. correct? New York, yeah, this yeah, is in New little York. town okay. called little town called Jamestown, New York. It's where okay. where I was born. Um, and uh, yeah, that was her alien. She just saw it, and uh, she doesn't know if there was missing time involved or anything, or wow. or what it was. But she doesn't remember what happened in between getting up and running, and then getting into the house and crying to her, her mother. There, there was no. She doesn't remember any of the time in between that. <laughs> you know, because a lot of people say missing time is the thing. Yeah, with UFOs. Like, yeah. So does she still have yeah. things occur to this day? About an, about aliens, just anything, just anything abnormal. Ghosts, still ghosts all the time. Ghosts all the time. Yeah, all the time. Whoa, yeah. almost almost not nightly, but she'll she'll mess with me like probably once a week and be like, "Yeah, I heard uh, I heard some whistling from upstairs. Nobody's up there, or you know." And it's these things. This whatever it is has never tried to hurt her. It's never. This- I tell her that all the time. I I would tell her that all the time. She doesn't freak out. It's never tried to hurt her. It's never been aggressive. It's always been noises and. So is it on it's her okay. side it's of the just, family though? Does she have a history of this? Like on her mother's I don't side know. of the family or like a familiar? I would love to Yeah, I would love to find that out. Maybe her mom had something like maybe it's a curse. She just something. seems like a, to get a magnet for anything. <laughs> like she I needs said, a, like a visit from a shaman or something. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. <laughs> get like, smudged or I don't know. Yeah. I mean, she's hitting <laughs> all the strange bingo. It just got it all. <laughs> It's awesome. I mean, it's not awesome. And it scares her every once in a while. But like I said, I yeah, always tell her, I always remind her, this thing has never hurt you. You know what I mean? It's yeah. never tried to do anything. It's right. Uh, right. It, it might just be, it might just be trying to reach out and I, maybe it just wants you to notice it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's pretty cool though. You know, it's cool well, to have a haunted mom. But to go to the Keel, <laughs> but go to the Keelian route sometimes, especially with the whole Mothman thing, especially from the book uh-huh. with Richard Gere, how they portrayed it. And I don't remember, I want to say the Mothman prophecies still had the same kind of perspective of when you notice things that notice you noticing them. Yeah. Then they do. Yeah, that's that's it, like yeah. Skinwalker Ranch. Like giving that. away that you've almost seen them or interacted with them. Or right, once right. you kind of engage in that contractual awareness. Yeah. That yeah. now they might engage with you more even. So, well, like at Skinwalker I, Ranch, those scientists talked about when you would do an experiment, it would completely do something completely different. out of the ordinary. And then the next time you try to run that same experiment, it, it would know that you're going to run that experiment somehow. Yeah. And it right. would completely freak you out or break your, mm-hmm. uh, all of your instrumentation. Like it knew what it was, the, the, what this old scientist called it. There's like some conscious force there that is literally messing with those, those research teams. Well, well, that's why the whole uh, when I when I told you the story about uh, you know the whisper from the basement saying hi or hello to her, I'm mm-hmm. like that does that doesn't happen. It, whatever whatever she has in her house or attached to her or whatever has never uh, garnered up enough energy to say a word. You know, it mm-hmm. does a lot of knockings and rappings and stuff. But so that was strange that you guys say that because that was like a one in 
she's never heard anything like that, uh, a disembodied voice. So that could be something like that. You know, it keeps, it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger, but it hasn't, it, you know, yeah. it's, it's the same stuff, you know what I mean? But it's, it said hello to her at one point mm-hmm. and she said, it's, it's, she said it didn't sound very nice though. That was a thing. It was like, a, it was like an old, old man's voice kind of, you know what I mean? Or something yeah. like mm. So, but like, but yeah, she just said it was freaky. Obviously it's freaky. Yeah. But, it, yeah, yeah. She, has, she, she hasn't had anything like that happen to her again. Because though. usually yeah, so. with demonic activity, you'll have where it right. starts out really like, light, lighthearted. It starts out right. light, lighthearted. Mm-hmm. Right. And it starts out with it little lulls rocks, you into it. But then all of a sudden it really starts to escalate into, yeah. you know, things being placed in weird areas. And then it's, <laughs> then you start hearing like, clawing on the floor and in the walls yeah. and well, yeah so it's pretty much just been that it's been the same stuff for years at this point so it's not anything i think it's just it might be a poltergeist maybe just playing little games and tricks it's mm-hmm. nothing to be scared of i don't think though yeah. at this point she's not really scared of it she just she gets spooked every once in a while but i don't think it's nothing gonna hurt her or anything so mm-hmm. yeah but yeah it, yeah. it does like I've had just and I'm probably not going to go into it because I've said it multiple times on our show before but I've had like a shadow person kind of same scenario cool cool audible yeah. like whispering like come closer type deal like freaked me out ran out oh, the house wow. and just standing there like okay well bolted was it trying to hurt you did it throw the and the only alternative is I'm not sleeping outside it's like near yeah. snowing <laughs> temperatures so I'm going right. back in yeah. at some point but there's a moment where you consider like Am I safe? Is it you, you? You do. You're going to run those calculations because you're not going back into danger. So like right. you got to know that right. first. And I think most people get to that. Even you got to have an extreme incidence of something threatening you or saying something right. malicious or m- malevolent intent in its actions. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm not going back in that house. But all other cases, I would say a lot of paranormal cases like that, people end up going back in because they're like, who knows what yeah. it was or what, you know background noise of of the world's yeah. echo just happened you know that this energy's just trapped here or whatever it is but it's weird to interact with it it's weird to have that occur but yeah you definitely it's also, gotta, it's, what do you do with it I think, <laughs> I think it's also just human just to be curious too oh yeah i mean uh you know what i mean so like i don't know if i was if i was hearing and seeing anything i would love it i would think and, and unless it starts to get malevolent mm-hmm. obviously yeah absolutely but, you know if i had if i had something knocking every once in a while on the, on the wall next to me i'd be like how you, how you, you know, how you doing, bud, you know, or whatever, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'd like to think yeah. I'd get to the point of maybe like he, uh, uh, I think I, again, I just watched Inception. So maybe it's, you know, Matthew McConaughey from the fourth or fifth dimension knocking on the wall, <laughs> yeah. trying to give oh, us yeah, some Morse sure. code of, uh, some, uh, you know, <laughs> superhuman capabilities of time travel, but maybe that is right. There is know. something to it. And the whole sixth sense of that whole kind of notion of, you know, you're, you're able to see these disembodied spirits and, and helping them to, release whatever's keeping them here, get them off of this plane or help them get to the other side type thing too of like, you know, uh, I don't like to see anything suffer, I guess, even if that's a disembodied spirit. So I'd be down to help whatever capacity mm-hmm. again, as long as it's, you know, polite. Yeah. <laughs> or his mom Absolutely. has the shining and is just there. able to perceive it's, it's, stuff that we can't. Yeah, that's that very you wouldn't real. be able to. Well, and you She's know, picking it up, but but yeah, only occurs Michael's in women next to her and ha- doesn't have yeah. the same experience. Yeah, I don't a, have nothing. Yeah. yeah, there's a genetic abnormality that occurs in only women that it's something with like their photoreceptors, their ability to see color. There was an art teacher and she was having her students paint pictures, right? And she was painting her own version and she kept looking at all their pictures, going, Why don't you have this color? And why don't you have that color? And what? what is going on? And they all look so bland to her. And they realized she had this like genetic mutation where her eye perceived like another wavelength or two or whatever of some spectrum that nobody else can see unless you have that. And so there really could be something to that whole, like, yeah, we have so many senses mapped down, but who's to say there's not another sense out there that we're just not aware of. And we haven't categorized yet and gave it a, a measurement, you know, to it. But yeah. there's definitely that, or or we've all had these abilities. Feel the energy. And we've been like shut off over time, and it, we don't know how to train them. Yeah, we don't we don't work with it. So human beings maybe just kind of evolved out of that. Well, they fluoridated the water and calcified your pineal gland. Oh God, so. here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, it's only been three episodes since we brought up fluoride and calcified pineal glands. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's so funny. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it a little bit. That's good. But no, I mean, I think it is some of that too of where you just got to be in tune with it. You know, maybe she doesn't even know how she does it, but she nope. probably has some the shining. Res- there you go. She's got the shining. You got the shitting. The shitting, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, uh, that, that's awesome, man. I mean, I love it. I didn't grow up with any. Well, my one aunt and uncle. Oh, I guess another aunt and uncle, but one aunt and uncle had a pretty good ghost story in particular of like you know, like the actual entity or spirit oh, over the yeah. crib of their son's bed oh, type thing, like boy. baby crying on the monitor. That's door the that, scariest story I've it was the free, ever heard. Personally, the Back freakiest in the day. ghost story that I know of. Yeah, like they moved out of that house like quick. Tell, tell them the story. I don't know. If I don't really know, know it that well. I, I know, just know it, it was well. like I want to say my do you? I thought my cousin was babysitting. Heard my cousin crying on the monitor. But in this house, to pre context it, there was a door that whenever they tried to close, that did not matter. It always was coming open. And this door like led to the like an attic, you know, like off of the bedroom or whatever of the bird. bedroom. They had a bird too. He always had a cockatiel or a cockatoo. Um, and the bird would go just absolutely bananas some nights, and the monitor would do all kinds of stuff. And so they're gone one night, and they have a babysitter. And again, it might have been my cousin. I can't remember. But so the monitor's going off, and the baby's crying. She's like, what's going on? So she goes up there and checks, and there's like this weird little elven-like entity creature, whatever. like Creepy demonic dwarf. Creeping over the crib, like and then like... Little dwarf man. Peels off and splits, and they were like, no, it was we're done. inside the little room yeah. with the bird, man. right? But, yeah. At one time, that it thing was, was like holding had the, the bird, bird like and was it. in the little door in the attic. I'll have to ask my uncle about it. Yeah, I want to get the full story. You know what? Him. I'll do that. The next time I see him, I'm going to get it like verbatim detail. I'll even record it or something, and I'll transcribe it. But I know that like another uncle of mine who knew him back in high school, right? He was like, oh, we went to see the exorcist in high school. And he was like, that uncle and his wife, they left the theater. They weren't even staying wow. for that because they were like, that freaked them out, right? They're like, no, 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 no. So when they're that's in this one house. The, by the way, that's one of the best horror movies of all time. Oh, it's, my it's God. Legitimately it's, messed people up, though. Yeah. Well, let people, me tell you, like, I was I was talking to my friend about that. And I said, it's probably one of the most, vi it's still vile to, to date. To, oh, even yes. today's standards. 100%. It's, 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 it's it, and the book, if you guys haven't read the book, amazing. Really? This book. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. I, I will look love into it. it. Love it. I yeah, will look man, into it. I'm very. I just watched a trailer for the new movie today, and that's that's. I'm very excited to see that. I don't think. What there's a remake of The Exorcist? Original. Yeah, they're doing. Yeah. Uh, the guy, the guy that did the new uh, Halloween movies, is doing uh, Exorcist. Exorcist. I forgot his name. Okay, David yeah. Gordon Green. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, but um, so, uh, it looks like in the movie there's two girls. Oh god. Uh, and they're both they're both uh they're both um. They're both going to be exercised at the same time. It looks like so it's going to be like double a double exorc exorcism. But yeah, you should watch the trailer. It looks it looks Damn. weird. Yeah, I watched yeah. I watched that film with my brothers when they were teenagers, high school, I, I out of high it from school. the library. Right, but yeah. the night we watched it, the one guy in the band that had to drive home by himself afterwards because he had watched it at our house. Oh, God, God, he drove home with the lights on in the car and the heater <laughs> on the heater on in the summer. Yeah. It was freaking him out so bad. Like he was yeah. just like that whole scene where it's just chilly and her breath is going. And yeah. Like they're uh -huh. doing the oh my god, yeah. Like Dude. the lights it's, were it's, it's on in the car. And I also read stories about like that they had to have like ambulances waiting outside of some of the screenings of yes. the movie because people would like faint and like it's a wild, wild movie. I, it's one of my favorite horror movies. I'm glad you brought that one up. That's one of, one of my favorites. Have you ever like, heard about is amazing the story uh, the yeah. story of the guitarist of CCR? Would no, or I'm sorry, <laughs> oh, how would uh, I? not CCR? It's um, uh, Freebird. God, I'm an idiot. Oh, uh, Leonard, Skinner. Uh, Leonard, Leonard Skinner. Skinner, the guitarist of Leonard Skinner. They were on tour in in, uh, in Europe somewhere, and the Exorcist was the big summer blockbuster tour. They decided they were all going to go out, and they took acid. Oh, and hello. went to <laughs> the Exorcist, and the guitarist essentially. Had a nervous breakdown. Had an existential crisis. Had literally, <laughs> literally lost it. I believe it. And he, I've, I'm pretty sure he left the tour, left the band, and was kind of never right ever again. That was like, a bad it, decision to go see that movie on acid. But yeah. And uh, it really messed with him the rest of his life. I believe it. Mm -hmm. Do you guys, do you guys Did have Did he shutter? tape his eyelids open too and go? No. <laughs> like, geez, I'm like trying to give yourself your own Gitmo experiment or Guantanamo Bay. Right. Like, God dang, yeah. man. But do you guys have the... You have a streaming thing called uh, Shutter by any chance? Uh, I don't. You ever heard of that? No. Mm -hmm. I, but anyways, heard of real it. quick, there's like a, there's a uh, 
there's a behind the scenes of the movie and it, it came out last year, but it's like an hour and a half long or something. It's just all behind the scenes of how they did stuff and all the movie magic that went into it. And it's, yeah. it's wild. Some of the, some of the stuff that she had to go through to make that movie. I feel like so, I watched something like that and I don't know what yeah. platform it was on. If it was Netflix or movies that made us. It or might, maybe the movie. it is. Maybe it's on something else. Yeah. yeah. I, Cause I remember that the girl that played the part, like how much threats they were getting for making the movie. Like they were Lin- catching Linda 10 Blair. tons of shit mm-hmm. for making that mm-hmm. film, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, Woo. she had a rough yeah. life. Yes, yeah. great. <laughs> so did the girl from mind. the God. little girl from Poltergeist. And the better part of that whole movie and the setup is the fact that that lady is a single mother. Mm-hmm. Like in that yeah. instance, there's no stability or like no bouncing it off the walls. It's just like those two pitted against each other, right? Like trying to figure right, it out right. and then bring it in. Oh, I need the to watch it like, again. I need Oof. to watch it again. Well, the whole thing, the whole one of my favorite things about that movie is not the Exorcist part is cool but you have uh um you have the father who's doing the exorcist yeah. he's 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 uh struggling with his own religion yes. at that point and and that whole struggle yeah. that's amazing that, that gives me chills thinking about that like it's just it's a priest that wants to give up on mm-hmm. everything and like he and then this exorcist then this 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 thing happens where it puts his faith back into him a little bit you know yep. it's, oh it's yeah whole struggle struggle with his religion I, I love the whole the whole thing he was yeah. getting ready to it's, quit it's or yeah. like move on from the priesthood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's what trying I, to quit the priesthood yep. in the beginning. God, I need to film. watch that again. He's questioning it because yeah, his mother's sick. I always feel like when yep. I watch those that like something's in my house. Then remember his mom. <laughs> it's weird. I remember kids. his mom. It's hard to bring that energy into my house. Maybe I'll just find some <laughs> movie theater and go watch it by myself. Let's watch it down here. Yeah, watch it down we'll here. It Rosen could be haunted. Yeah. I mean, we sm- <laughs> we use Palo Santo and Sage. Yeah, we'll smudge this area. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll get deep in it. Get the demons no. at bay. We'll eat some pea soup I, and watch it. I don't remember. I don't remember what we were talking. I don't remember what we were talking about originally. Now at this point, it's the Exorcist. Dude, <sighs> who knows? It's an Exorcist podcast. I think now. we were talking I mean, about your mother and her yeah, haunted, your mom. haunted woman her haunted. ways. And <laughs> your mom. That's got hopefully the shiny. She is a haunted hopefully it does, woman. <laughs> hopefully it doesn't get as bad as the Exorcist. You know. Yeah, so no, no. is she a good cook? Yeah. No, yeah, she, yeah, she's good. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty good. Yeah. I was well, trying to offset the, the haunted you woman. Say yes, it, I was thinking of the the, that... the singles ad of like haunted woman, but I can bake a mean pie. <laughs> but we might it's have not three. The, it's not that she's a bad cook. She's vegetarian, and oh, I'm a cool. big fan of meat. Meat, yeah. so yeah. that's she's not bad. I just you know I don't I love meat. So I'm with yeah. you, dude. I was about to say yeah. I can tell my <laughs> wife now. That's why I can't eat vegetables because the vegetable man's out there, and if I eat broccoli, you know, he might come <laughs> <Yeah>. get me. <laughs> He'll get you, man. Exactly. God, that's funny. <laughs> you don't want an encounter with the old vegetable man. Yeah. Let me ask you this: Growing up where yeah. you did, you had some stories that you've obviously you said turn into the book about the you know. um the gigantic sloths, like the ground sloths. Mm-hmm. What about mm-hmm. where you're living now and with the festivals and kind of things you've gone to? What are some of the stories you hear from locals or what are, are there anything that it's a, um, a common occurrence? Like, Oh, over here. Yeah. People definitely see squ- squatch through here. Or is there anything mm-hmm. like that? That's a common, like, Oh yeah, definitely. Somebody saw this again today in this neck of the woods. And you're like, really? Like, mm-hmm. is that common? Yeah. I hear a lot of, I hear a lot of Bigfoot stuff. I mean, that's mm-hmm. mostly, uh, um, I don't, I don't, we don't really get too many weird, uh, too off, too much out there. Hmm. Um, we, it's a lot of Bigfoot stuff though. Um, okay. West Virginia is pretty Bigfoot friendly. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Know, like I said before, it's a lot, a lot of untouched places here. So it's got a lot of room to roam. Oh, but, absolutely. Yeah, it's, a, it's a lot of Bigfoot, uh, a lot of Bigfoot stuff here. And, uh, which I liked. I'm a fan of, I love Bigfoot. And I think it's, I think that's cool. I wish we could get some weirder reports in, but. And, you know, I'd rather not. Sometimes I think that I would like to hear these reports, but sometimes mm-hmm. I, I think maybe it's good that we're not hearing these reports because, you know, I don't, I don't know. Because people say that West Virginia is a window area. I don't know if you guys have heard this mm-hmm. sure. window area. It's, yep. super it's super. opened up. It's, yeah. it's opened other dimensions and stuff. So I would hate it if that window stuck open. You know what I mean? And then, then there's no uh, there's no turning back with it. You know, it's all these things start too. coming in. After exactly, the, uh, that's it. Yeah, the containment fails. Makes mm-hmm. me think they of shut a giant down the like, containment area. It makes me think of the giant <laughs> yeah. like air window on space balls that they can open and close. That when <laughs> President Scrooge comes down and sucks all the air out of Planet Druidia. Yeah. You know, like the super <laughs> spectrum windows open, like our little ecosphere bubble of the earth is now able to be penetrated by these Mothman and, uh, you know, uh, uh, pterosaurs, the Thunderbird and yeah, the yeah. Veggie Man. And I mean, 
we're ripping over we're ripping open portals right now I think there yeah. were stargates and portals and ancient temples that have kind of been markers for these places that have throughout time maybe are opening and closing. Yeah. Uh, maybe a civilization died and just never closed up the stargate, never closed up the portal, and they moved on. And it was never properly maintenanced or maintained. You know, down here in Ohio, Serpent Mound being just a sh the nexus of strain yeah. of all Ohio. What if they have migration portal patterns? activity, Bigfoot down there? I mean, you have so much happening just yeah. in that one county where, <clears throat> you know, UFO reports, strange weather, magnetic anomalies, the, the, yep. the crater. So it kind of creates this. It is a portal area. Yeah. Yeah, I was what, what if it's like it? migration patterns, like Crop you know, circles. Mossman comes around every so many years on Skinwalker Ranch. It's like you got the interstellar highway of these creatures that can come out of these wormholes. Like, what if there's this mixture of like there's these actual UFOs are coming down to it, and then you've got interdimensional galaxies coming over here through war like beings, dogmen, or Skinwalker. We really just we might be getting to the level of awareness. Well, and we yeah. can perceive, perceve these things. Sure. Our consciousness. Well, that's the We've thing. We've had them see. smattered throughout time. Right. Like in, in the Mothman prophecies, John Keel, he explains that during the flap of, uh, you know, there was a flap of UFOs during the time Mothman was oh, being yeah. seen. They, they would go up to this hilltop. Him and Mary Heyer mm -hmm. would go to this hilltop and they'd watch these UFOs dancing in the sky. I mean, they'd do it every night. He'd yeah. interact with them. So the, he'd he'd flash yeah, his the, headlights the at them. Yep. Yeah. And flashlights, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. They'd respond, yeah. they'd hide, they'd, you know, dodge Those, out of the way of the light, like yeah. all kinds of mm -hmm. stuff. So something, something's going on there. You know what I mean? It's not just, you know, it seems like when one thing, one strange thing's happen, when a strange thing happens somewhere, it, something else happens. Like, uh, like mm -hmm. a lot of UFO sightings are followed up by Bigfoot sightings. Oh yeah. You know, that, like that kind of stuff. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's, I think it's kind of cool. I love, I love all that stuff. So I, Us yeah. too. I could handle a Sasquatch sighting. Of the strange. Oh yeah. It's the best. Yeah. I would love to see yeah. a UFO. I have seen something that I'm not sure what I would <clears> classify it as that time. We were driving to go camping in Kentucky. We we're passing Cincinnati, and I saw like I'm looking out the window. The cars were driving. It's probably nine o'clock at night, and I see pretty bright orange ball. I'm like, "What the hell is that? Is that just like okay? I'm gonna try to dismiss this as fast as I can because I'm gonna go through the Rolodex. Is it a flare? Is it something flying? It's not really flying. Then it was like it popped out like two more balls. And then it still wasn't falling. Wow. And I'm like telling my wife, like, what the hell is that? Look out the window. Like, what, am I, I need to know if I'm freaking out or having like, you know, do I have floaters in my eyes? Am I have a retinal detachment here? You know, is my optic nerve not working? Like, what's going on? She's like, no, I see it. And then they like went back up and then whoop, disappeared. And the wow. people that are driving the car, I'm like, did you guys just see it? What the hell was that? And they're like, oh, was it a UFO? I'm like, I can't identify it, could you? That's the definition of a UFO. Well, that's what Jeff from Strangeology was talking about. Well, that's kind of like the spirit lights or ghost lights that they talk about. Mm -hmm. I've only seen that yeah. once. Yeah, like or the, for, like, the very Marfa brief. lights in Texas, which are completely... Yep. They have a similar out at Skinwalker Ranch where the whole <sighs> side of the mountain will just start glowing. I got to get They've there. They've captured video of that. I got to get there. Where the mountainside will literally start... We'll have these lighting effects over it. I'll be a volunteer camper. I'll sign my life away. <laughs> well, we can get on a property adjacent to it through a couple of uh, Brandon Fugel, the guy that owns <laughs> that ranch. Hit us up, brother. Yeah, let me on. I want to camp out there. I want to help out. I'll be bait. I'll sign the disclosure or non-disclosure. Put me out there. I just need to know for myself personally. Sorry, everyone else. I'm not disclosing anything. <laughs> <laughs> at all no. man this has been fun michael it's been a blast to get to know you, Thank you. Uh, hear about yeah. you know all the things you guys are doing with the podcast and yeah uh, mm -hmm. the books that you're writing and then this amazing story of these white creatures and the grassroots Thank effort you. of it the organic yeah. nature of it the community mm -hmm. of it kudos on that man for yeah. doing a really good job on that and really kind of like sewing that community together tighter and building that out yeah. exactly what we're trying to do here as well you know just yeah. keep elevating Appreciate these that. conversations and talks and People like yourself, like, give this more of a voice, you know? Yep. Yeah. I appreciate that, guys. I, I really do. I, uh, this was a lot of fun. I liked, uh, like, chat, like, because we, we've been on it for a while. I, time just passed, man. I don't <laughs> know where it went. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it we're great. approaching, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're approaching two hours. This day just melted wow. away. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That was great. So, so thank you. I appreciate Absolutely. It. Absolutely. <laughs> 
Uh, it, it, and like I said, if we're we're totally open to collaborating, yes. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, like cool. I said, we we can help in a lot of different ways with with video production. Or if you have any ideas that you've ha kind of been held back to um, explore because you know you didn't have cameras yep. or didn't know anybody. And I am a singer songwriter as well for fun Music. on the side. I've played yep. guitar for like 20, 25 years. Yep. Uh, you guys are killer, man. You guys know God at all. I got a buddy That's with a awesome. studio in his house. So if you want some music or have ideas sometimes, send me something. I'll work on something when I get a minute. That'll be, that'll be a blast. Heck yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. I would yeah. love to collaborate. Yeah. This has been great. Super I'm fun. full. My cup is Cups full. Yep. I've had two cups of strange today. <laughs> I usually only have one. <laughs> My strange intake is at an all time high. But it's been great. It's been great. Yeah, I would cool. love to can like have you back on in the future, collaborate. Like cool. said, yeah, sure we'll see you at a conference down the line or something like that again. But keep doing yeah. what you're doing, man. Don't stop. Thanks. Yeah. Stop. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And Michael, one more time, let us know where we can follow you, find the books, the podcast, and if yeah. you have any last words that you want to leave with our audience, the floor is yours, yeah. brother. Um, so um, so that you can find the podcast on Instagram and Facebook. It's just Moth Boys Podcast uh, on both. Uh, and then you can find all the books on uh, Amazon. You can find the Curious Creatures, the Vegetable Man on uh, Small Time Monsters uh, web, web store. Um yeah, and that's 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 about it. And then, yeah, hopefully you listen to us and hopefully you like it. Leave us a review. If you don't like us, leave us a bad review. Whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter to us. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, uh, and <laughs> don't forget yeah. about the event you have coming up, the festival. Oh yeah. yes, yeah, and Cryptid Bash. Yeah, I could come to Cryptid Bash uh, Saturday, August nineteenth, in Heiko, West Virginia, at the Free Folk Brew House and Tasting Room from twelve to seven. Uh, that'd be much appreciated. Uh, much much appreciated to. to and we, I, yeah, thanks guys. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And I just, it's been a real, real blast. So I, I really, I don't do many, uh, interviews. I'm very choosy with my interviews. So, uh, um, Sweet. thank, thank you again. Absolutely. Absolutely. A pleasure, man. man. We had a great time. This like, is awesome. this is what we like to do in general. Like you said earlier, it's just conversations we'd normally have. We're like, mm -hmm. can we just put this on camera and start talking about weird stuff that we like? <laughs> sure. Exactly. People love yeah. it. Like, hopefully they love it. If you don't, we're sorry. We'll try better next time. But I thought yeah, it was fun. There you go. If nothing else, it's just been a way for us to be able to actually like if we didn't do this show we i need a release met, valve we probably never met michael well your release valve yeah, there you sure. go but oh yeah. the amount of people that we've been able to oh I mean, yeah we've always been good at networking and getting in front of <coughs> meeting strange people seem to have always kind of come in our in our pathway but right when yeah. with the show that's like supercharged well, we're like bloodhounds well, for the strange yeah well, yeah, well, you got also you, us weirdos got to stick together. Yeah, yes. you know I mean, so like, 100. yeah, so like, you know, uh, yeah, so it's always good to talk to a couple of, of uh, fellow weirdos. For sure. Uh, so, for sure. Yeah. Help each yeah. other, support each other. Like I said, mm -hmm. we're, we're always there. If you ever uh, need anything, hit us up. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think we can wrap this one on. Put a bow uh, on it. Like we said earlier, Michael, don't go anywhere. We're going to come right back yep. and give you a cool. proper goodbye. We'll outro Thank the you. show. And uh, once again, Appreciate Michael you. Strayer, everybody. Woo. That was awesome. Peace, brother. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Two cryptids. In the bag of, uh, you know, the vegetable man I had heard of a little bit. Never heard the full story. Michael laid it out the way he did. I hadn't really, you know, it's just one of those things that popped up a little bit where it's like it's another one of those things where I just never dug into it. All I can imagine then, is like a white demonic mon Gumby. <laughs> wow. Like a tall, yeah, like, yeah, broccoli, yeah. asparagus, <laughs> suction cup fingered Gumby. like <laughs> That sucks your blood. With not a happy, smiley face, but this, like, give me your blood. Give me your blood. I'll suction that. cup it out of you. <laughs> you got a cup of blood? <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Get out of here, vegetable man. Come <laughs> on. He's going to hypnotize no. you. You can't get away. No. Or like the little old grandpa from Family Guy. Yeah. You want a popsicle? <laughs> no. Get out of here. <laughs> well, that, that was fun. Um, I had a blast. But, uh, yeah, anything else from our end? You know, as always, uh, you guys got... Oh, what you got there, Mike? Uh -oh, oh, that's the... Mike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, the vegetable man. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, man, that's that great. That is great. That's great. Uh, <sighs> dude, so great. Uh, Love it. He's got, like, the broccoli <laughs> hair. That's nuts, man. Uh, you guys can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, uh, like, subscribe, YouTube, share our videos. Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can find us anywhere you get Stitcher. your podcasts. 
Damn. Stitcher. Yeah. Google. I don't the... know if you've ever said st- promoted Stitcher before. <laughs> nice, nice Stitcher plug. Bob. Podbean. Podbean. We're on Pod Guru. Yeah, yeah. let's, let's get say. let's get with it. Uh, Amazon Music. Let's, uh, let's what drop else the got? vernacular. Uh, but um, you guys know where to find us. Yeah. Uh, we're the Strange Road, and we appreciate you, each and every one of you. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank Stoner you for and Disbro. Thank. Master Thanks control guys. outro shot of those guys. We love those guys. Hey, there's the master control shot that everybody the best loves in the Midwest. There you go, a little a little clappy. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's it for nice. us, Bub. I'm good. Cups full. We're ready to go. I'm good. I'm good. All right, guys. Signing out. Peace. Later, guys. <laughs>